everyone. My name is Anna and I'm a visitor experience assistant here at Guelph Museums. I'm super excited to share this video series with you here because we're going behind the scenes to take a look at some of the artifacts we have here in our collections. And this week, we're gonna be taking a look at some artifacts that you might recognize. Don't forget to follow along with your worksheet as we answer our five questions. Now, question number one, what is it? These you might recognize right away. They're snowshoes. And this is easy to tell because people still use objects like these today. Snowshoes are objects that you would strap to your feet to help you to walk on snow. Now, before we dive into the fascinating history behind snowshoes, we're gonna take a look at the really cool scientific principle that makes snowshoes work. But first, we need a few things. Ah, perfect. We need a bowl of water and two slices of bread. And this is something that you can try at home with the help of a grown up. First, squish one slice of bread into a little ball. I've already squished this one up nice and small. Now, drop it into the water. Whoa, see how it sinks? But what if we want our bread to float? Easy, we need to spread out the weight. This time, don't squish the bread. Just put the slice on the water and it floats. This is because we're distributing or spreading out the weight of the bread on the water. Now, let's get back to the snowshoes. Snowshoes work on the same principle. If you step into a pile of snow with just your boots on, you'll sink right in because all of your weight is in one small area. But if you use the snowshoes, it spreads out your weight all the way around the whole snowshoe which means that you'll stay on top of the snow and it makes it a lot easier to walk, especially for long distances. Number two, who made it? Now, these two snowshoes are actually from different sets. And so we're gonna talk about each of them individually. And we're gonna focus mostly on this set of snowshoes because this is the one that we know more about. Now, this one is a little bit tougher than last week because we don't have the name of the person written right on the object. It's also not in our records. Now, because we don't know exactly who made this pair of snowshoes, we have to make some educated guesses. So to me, this set looks handmade. It doesn't look like it was made in a factory. I don't see lots of tool marks and they look pretty specific and unique to a single person who made them. They don't look like they were mass produced. But because we don't know that much about this specific uh, snowshoe or even this snowshoe here, what we can do is take this as an opportunity to dive into the history of snowshoes more broadly. Snowshoes have been used for thousands of years by people all over the world. But this style of snowshoe has its direct origins to the indigenous peoples of what we now call North America. The First Nations, Inuit and Métis people all perfected their own individual styles of snowshoes depending on where they lived and the kind of areas that they had to move around. Now this style here is most similar to the Huron Wendat style. They were used in areas of deep snow, especially if you had to travel long distances. But many nations perfected their own style of snowshoes, including the beaver tail or the bear paw styles. This is closer to a bear paw style. And these were used in areas of lots of woods or mountains where it wouldn't be really hard to move through the woods if you had longer snowshoes on. Number three, what is it made out of? These snowshoes are made out of wood and rawhide. Traditional snowshoes were often made out of ash or birch, and they were soaked or steamed to make the wood nice and bendy to form the kind of rounded shape. Then moose, deer, or caribou hide were used to make uh, the rawhide lacing that's called babiche. Number four, when was it made? Now this one is a really tough question and we don't really know the answer to it. We do know that this set of snowshoes was donated to the museum by the Marsh family, the same family we talked about last week that came to Guelph in the 1800s and brought the pocket globe with them. So we know that these snowshoes can't be older than that. 
They may have been used by one of the early settler families in Guelph, or they may have been used more recently as just for fun. We don't really know for sure. Number five, why did the museum collect this artifact? The easy answer is that it's an old artifact used by an early settler family from Guelph in the 1800s, but there's a lot more to it than that. This object helps us to learn more about some wider themes in Canadian history. It helps us to learn about Indigenous cultures that use snowshoes to live uh, in this climate, and it also helps us to understand the technology that was perfected by Indigenous peoples long before settlers ever arrived here. We can also learn about how early settlers from Europe adopted Indigenous technology like snowshoes to help them survive in the cold, snowy winters of Canada. Snowshoes were an essential piece of Indigenous technology used by many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people all across the area that we now call North America. And they continue to be an important part of the cultural identity of many Indigenous peoples. Snowshoeing is also a lot of fun. I love snowshoeing. It's one of my favorite activities to do outside in the winter because it lets you get outside and enjoy nature and go places that would be really hard to explore without the help of snowshoes in the snowy winters. Indigenous peoples perfected the design of snowshoes because of the cold and snowy climate that they lived in. But what about people who lived in different kinds of climates? Why don't you have an adult help you use Google Earth again? Use the I'm feeling lucky tool to choose a random place in the world. Then start some research. Did the people who live there wear special clothes to help them stay warm or cool? Do they have footwear that helps them get around? Do they walk around, drive cars, or use boats? What about early people who lived in those places? What kind of technology did they use to help them live? Think about how it might have been different from someone who lived in a climate like Canada's. Don't forget to join us next week when we find another artifact in our collection to examine. Thanks everyone!